Hi everybody, my name is Mary with Mary Making Crafts and in today's video I am going to show you how to use washi tape for diamond painting. So I'm going to show you really quickly uh, what you're going to need. Um, you're going to need your diamond painting canvas that you're going to be working on. I happen to have one here and I will zoom out and show you this whole canvas here in just a minute. But you're also going to need some washi tape. So I have two examples here just of some different thicknesses. Whatever thickness you decide to use is completely up to you. Um, I tend to prefer this thinner one, and um, this kit here is uh, a view of Santorini, Greece, and this washi tape looked very Greek to me, so I thought this one would be a great match for it, um, in addition to this pretty little floral number I have here. So these, um, again, will vary in thickness. There are lots of different shapes and styles and sizes of washi tape, what you choose is completely up to you. So these are the two that I've chosen to use for this kit. And the other thing that you might want to invest in for diamond painting, if you haven't already, is some sort of craft knife. Now this one is a nice a sharp little number. Um, you can get these on Amazon for very, it's very inexpensive. Um, this one here is just one that's like a little more little more foolproof and kid friendly. Um, it just has a very teeny, teeny, tiny, you can see that there, ceramic blade on the end of it. I also have something on my hand there. Uh, yeah, so you have a teeny, tiny ceramic blade there. Um, and both of these work just fine. I, for the sake of this video, I'm going to use my actual craft knife. Um, you could also use scissors uh, if you do not have one of these available. Don't go to the store and buy stuff if you don't have stuff. Um, this is just a, a basic little tutorial on how to use washi tape for diamond painting. So there are two reasons that you would use washi tape for diamond painting. Number one is to cover the edges of your painting um, to protect it against getting fuzzies. And what I mean by that, and I'm gonna come up real close here and kind of show you the corner of this painting when I peel the film back here. No, this is going to be a little bit tough to see on camera, but I'm going to do the best I can. But you can see, whoops, you can see right here on the edge that I've got a little extra glue. See it really well up there at the top of the frame. A little extra glue that goes past where you are going to lay down your drills. And my favorite way to use washi tape is to cover that glue up so that we don't get fuzzies from, you know, cat hair, dust, um, you know, fuzzies from the, the sleeve of your sweater, whatever, whatever the case may be. We don't want that gunk in the sides of the painting. So washi tape is really great for protecting against that. So I'm going to show you how I um, use washi tape for that. And the other way that we would use it, um, and let me zoom out here real quick. Okay, hopefully you can see a better view of my whole canvas. Another reason that we would use washi tape um, on top of this plastic cover, not be not after you take it off, but before, you would lay down washi tape um, to section off your canvas, uh, especially if you're working on something larger. As you can see, these are my hands, and this is this painting. So this is a very large painting, and the way that I um, would make this into something that's a little bit more. Um, you know, handleable, tackleable, um, <laughs> that that I don't feel so overwhelmed by is to section this off into smaller sections. So I'm going to show you how to do both of those things right now. Okay, so I have you pretty zoomed in here. I have you zoomed into the bottom left corner of my painting. I am just going to turn this to the side very quickly um, because I. I find it easier to stretch washi tape across this way. Um, so I am going to start here at the very top left of my painting. I'm going to peel back this cover just ever so slightly. And I usually cover these paintings um, one side at a time. So I'll do one strip this way and then one strip this way, one strip this way and then one strip that way. So I am going to start on this one with my thinner washi tape. This is my smaller one. And I am just gonna go, I'm gonna pull out a little strip here and I'm gonna start at the top. And I wanna get this as close to the edge without going over as I can. So I'm gonna start there and then I just want to 
stretch that all the way down again as neatly as possible now don't worry if you are um, if you are using a thinner or thinner or a thicker washi tape don't worry if you are covering this um, legend here Oops! if you are covering this legend here um, I will show you what to do about that in the case of this one you can almost see through this washi um, from above but when I'm looking at it with the naked eye and the camera it looks a lot more clear but with the naked eye it's not quite as clear so I have this stretched all the way down this edge here and I'm just going to show you what I do to see my my cover here is already coming back down I'll just show you what I do to cut that um, to cut that off keep my cover pulled back um, this is a great time to use a cover minder by the way and a cover minder is a little device here I've got there's a magnet on the back of it and one underneath it so I will stick this magnet underneath my cover my painting excuse me canvas and then this one on top and it'll hold that cover back for me so I don't have to deal with it anyway um, so down here I'm just gonna take my craft knife and run it ever so gently along that washi tape and it pulls right off uh, super easy so in the same way I'm actually gonna do another strip here and I won't go the whole way across I'm just gonna show you just for the sake of this video I'm gonna show you what I do here I will just cut right against where I had um, where I had this other corner and that way I've just got a nice clean line and a nice clean cornered edge so I will show you really quickly what I do in order to um, make sure that I can still see my uh, my legend okay so we are back on this side I'm gonna slide that magnet underneath and use my my cover minder again just to hold back that plastic and I'm gonna make it so I can see this legend just a little easier um, I am gonna cut just a little bit of this washi off here because it's too long and it's bothering me <laughs> um, I'm very picky I am very careful with my washi tape and I make sure that it's very straight um, but you do not have to be as crazy as me um, and you know once you put um, your other strip on this side it will be easier to uh, to cut the top of that off as well um, but the way that I actually do this so I use my craft knife the same way I used it to cut my washi before and I will just run it along this strip as neatly as I can and you can go right in and pull up a little patience and maybe not long nails and you can pull that right up so you can now see your legend but you still have your canvas covered by that little tiny sliver there so that is how I make sure that my legend is still um, visible and hopefully you found that helpful. So now that I have my edges covered, I'm gonna go ahead and finish covering the rest of them off camera. And then I will show you how to section your canvas with the washi tape. Really quickly, before we talk about sectioning off, I just wanted to mention, um, I know that this craft knife can seem very, very scary um, when you are running it along a canvas that you paid good money for. Um, so I just wanted to reiterate that you want to press gently enough that you are not cutting your canvas, but heavily enough that you are cutting your washi tape. So there's kind of a balance there. Um, if you're afraid, it's better to go too light than too heavy. So that is my only warning there. Um, now, in terms of sectioning off your canvas, um, there are a few ways to do that. And one of them is with washi tape. Another way is with release papers. I tend to use a combination of both. So I have some release papers that I have purchased off of Amazon. This one is a four by six inch release paper. And 
this one is, I believe, a five by six. So you can really choose whichever, I think I cut that one actually, but that's okay. I cut them sometimes. Um, actually, yeah, this is a five by six and a half. That's what it is. Sorry, I was like, huh? Yeah, it's five by six and a half. So that's why I didn't cut this one. So um, this one here is a five by seven. So it's really just whatever size works for you. Um, uh, like I said, if you want to use release papers, you just want to make sure. I actually prefer the ones from Amazon um, over the Diamond Art Club ones because they are dual sided. So it doesn't matter which side you stick to your canvas um, because it's shiny there and shiny there. Um, for the Diamond Art Club ones, there's only one side that's shiny. This side here with the writing on it is matte so you can't stick it that side down. Um, these also tend to curl a lot after you've used them and I just, they're not my favorite. Um, the ones from Amazon that are dual sided do not curl as much. So really the size of section that you wanna work on is completely up to you. This is just the way that I section my canvas. Other people might section it a totally different way. But my favorite way to section a canvas is into quarters. And the reason I like doing that is because I like to measure my progress. And the best way to measure my progress, in my opinion, is to say, okay, I'm one quarter done. I'm halfway, I'm three quarters, or I'm all the way. So that's kind of how I like to section my canvas off. So what I will do is I will take my washi tape and I start at the center. And depending on the way the painting is going, since this one is a landscape orientation from left to right, I will actually do my strips up and down this way. So I'm working my way from left to right on the painting. If I am doing a painting that is top to bottom, I like to work from top to bottom. Like, so if this were a portrait orientation, if it were turned this way, I would start, I would do the half this way and then do my top quarter my second quarter, third, and fourth. So it really just depends on what the orientation of the painting is. For me, um, it's just how I like to work on them. So in this case, I am going to just run a strip of washi down the very center of my painting, and I eyeball it every time. I am not um, actually measuring it. I am measuring it with my eyes. So this looks like it's about halfway for me. Um, and I just, I run it along one of the lines in the painting. And that's about it. Uh, so that is my halfway mark. So I'm just going to make sure that washi is, is settled there. And I'm going to use my knife and cut it just gently enough that you're cutting the washi and not the not the canvas and that's it so now i'm going to actually do my other two uh, lines to split these two in half and then i have quarters for the whole painting so i'll do that off camera here and then i'll come back and show you what i do to get started Alrighty, y'all so now i have this canvas uh nice and uh sectioned off now some people um i know i was mentioning some people only use washi tape and others will use um will use a combination of washi tape and release paper like i do so if you are only using washi tape um the next uh section or the next um, step for you might be to go ahead and run um some vertical uh, sorry, horizontal lines, excuse me, these are, hor these are vertical. <laughs> so the next step for you might be to run some horizontal lines across this painting. You could section it into another four, so you have like sixteenths. Um, it's really completely up to you what size you want your sections to be. For me, I use a combination of washi tape to section it into quarters, and then I will take my painting, so I'm going to turn this to the side, and I'm going to use my knife once again. And I'm actually going to cut this entire strip off of the painting. So of, of the cover, excuse me. So what I like to do is use my craft knife again. Again, I am pressing very gently to make sure I'm only cutting through the actual, um, 
the actual plastic here and not the canvas. So I'm going nice and gently and I can kind of feel it. You can feel it cutting through that plastic. Um, I just ran my knife along the edge of that washi tape. And now I'm just gonna gently peel this part of my plastic um, completely off. And let me make sure. I do have a little bit. There we go. This one is particularly stubborn. Okay, so now that I have that plastic off the canvas, I can go ahead and cover this with release paper if I want to. So I usually like to uh, section each piece off into usually about four sections. So I am using the Diamond Art Club release paper for this just because it's the right size. And now I have four fairly even sections that I can work on. So I once I complete these four, then I'll move on to the next one. So again, this is my process. This does not have to be your process. You could choose, um, if you decide that you want to use your washi tape to do um, horizontal lines on here too, you could just use your craft knife and cut one section at a time. Like you could just cut this corner and then once it's done, cut that corner. Um, I just find that having to get my craft knife out and cut that plastic off all the time um, got to be too tedious for me, which is why I like to use the release papers. But what you want to do is completely up to you. But as you can see, that release paper peels off nice and easily. And then um, sometimes what I'll also do um, is I'll save a little piece of the plastic that I took off so that once I already have drills down on this canvas, um, the release paper doesn't stick very well, um, but I can go ahead and put that plastic down um, and kind of tuck it in where, um, where the drills are not placed down. And that way I can, um, that way I can cover it just to make sure dust and stuff doesn't get in there when I'm not working on it. But usually I try to tackle a whole section at a time so that doesn't really become an issue, but you never know, sometimes you get pulled away even though we could diamond paint all day. But anyway, I hope you found that helpful. Um, and yeah, if you did, uh, I would love to have you here as part of my little tribe. Um, and I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Hey guys, so did you think we were done? Because we're not. Um, one last thing I just wanted to mention um, about keeping a piece of the plastic. So I have here a piece of the plastic um, that I had originally had on this section of the painting. And what I wanted to mention is if you do keep a piece of this, so let's say I had a bunch of drills down here and I, um, and it wasn't, I wasn't completely finished with this section and I needed to walk away. You want to save a piece of this plastic because this plastic is a lot more pliable and bendable. I'll get to this in a second. This, <laughs> this plastic's a lot more pliable and bendable than this release paper and it'll actually stick in between where you've put those drills. Now, a lot of the plastic for these diamond paintings doesn't work um, both ways. So if I were to turn this around, it would be a lot harder stuck to my painting. And that is the reason that I brought out this little butterfly sticker. So um, this little sticker here just symbolizes that this is the top. I don't wanna put this down this way because it will get too stuck and I won't be able to get it up. I want to put it this way. So um, that was just a little warning there. I wanted to make sure that I covered that and I didn't leave you, um, you know, in the lurch there. <laughs> like, at least you have that information now. I would feel terrible if I didn't tell you that. So I just wanted to make sure that I shared that info before um, you hopped off of this video. And um, now I will actually say bye. And that being said, uh, on my channel, uh, 
I have not yet focused much on teaching uh, people and sharing my knowledge. And so this is one of my first videos where I have had the opportunity to do that. And I'm hoping to make more of these tips, tricks, tutorials, how to's. And um, that being said, what I ha do have on my channel is um, a daily vlog where I talk to you about the progress I've made, any kits that I get and life. Um, I also have weekly whipping chats, uh, as weekly as I can make them, uh, where you can just hang out with me while I work on a kit and you can work on yours. Um, and I also do lots and lots of unboxings because those make me the happiest. Anyway, uh, I hope that you will join me here and that you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. For real this time. Bye. <laughs>